one of the most extreme panic attacks in recorded history is of Jesus. Hey guys, welcome back to Joey Talks Life. My name is Joey, and on today's video, I wanna to talk to you about Jesus and anxiety. First, if you haven't noticed, I got some new plugs. These are white. I've been wanting white for a long, long time. They got lost by Amazon in the mail, like way before Christmas, and I finally got them, so very happy about that. Growing up as a Christian, I always thought that God didn't get it. I thought that he was like this being floating out there somewhere in the universe, and he didn't understand, and I don't mean understand cognitively, I mean he didn't have the lived experience of what it was like to experience mental health issues like anxiety, depression, panic. It's interesting because again, one of the, like I said in the intro, one of the most extreme panic attacks that we have in recorded history, even outside of like Christianity or the Bible or whatever, like in all of recorded history is Jesus before he went to the cross, he went to pray in a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. And he had his disciples with him and he told them to pray. And he went off by himself as they were supposed to pray, but they fell asleep multiple times. Anyway, he went alone to pray and we have the prayer that he prayed to the Father during that time. And during that prayer, he was in essence pleading with the Father, asking him if there's another way to accomplish your will, another way to accomplish this redemption plan, please, can we do that plan B? Because I am so overwhelmed with anxiety and panic right now that I don't want to do this, basically. And the Bible actually specifies that he had so much anxiety that he sweat drops of blood, which now in having science, we understand that I guess when the body is under that amount of stress, like an extreme amount of stress, that the blood vessels actually can erupt and come out through the skin so it looks like you're sweating drops of blood. Now, I've had anxiety attacks, I've had panic attacks, I've had generalized anxiety, I've had many forms of anxiety in my life, but I have never gotten to the point where I have sweat drops of blood. Now, Jesus's conclusion in that prayer was, but not my will, but your will be done, basically submitting to the will of the Father, regardless if there was a plan B or not. The main thing that I wanna draw our attention to in that story is that Jesus gets it, is that God gets it. I don't know about you, but recently I have been experiencing an increase in anxiety because my work, my real job, which is a video producer, has been very, very slow since about mid-October. And so when it's slow, I have very limited resources. And with the holidays and I have four kids and all of that, there's a lot of money that's needed in order to make that happen. And so my anxiety levels have been much higher. And even still to this day, when I have anxiety, something in me thinks and believes that God just doesn't understand, like because he's God, right? So he doesn't get that I'm anxious over X, Y, or Z. And I'm sure you have felt the same way as well. I mean, similar, in the area of depression when i get really depressed many times i just feel like god doesn't get this like he can't relate to this he doesn't understand it and so i just kind of got to suck it up and go through it on my own god has been showing me that this is not the case i mean even in hebrews it says that we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with us in our weakness because he experienced what it is to be human and I know a lot of people like to say, oh, you shouldn't be anxious. And when you're anxious as a Christian, you should just pray and give it to God and all that. But all of us know that there comes a certain point of anxiety where you can't just simply give it to God. Like there's a response in our nervous system that causes our body and our brain to kind of like go haywire. And we kind of cross that line where we're like beyond the point of no return. Now, being human and being in life, there are anxieties. All of us experience anxiety. It's a natural, normal human reaction and response, especially when we feel threatened or we feel like we're unsafe, like we get anxiety. So, you know, you could worry about food, you could worry about clothing, we, we could worry about our work, our relationships. There's lots of things that we can end up worrying about that can cause anxiety. And those things, absolutely, we should pray and we should make petitions before God. But what I want to get across in this video is that after you've done that, if you still feel anxious, my personal 
way in which I handle this now with myself is that I begin to r- relate to God and have God relate to me. I let my um, walls come down before him and I just share my heart with him and I let him know exactly what I'm feeling. I let him know um, if I'm upset with him, if I feel like he's not coming through, because I believe that in speaking with God in a very raw real, authentic way is honoring to him. I think sometimes in certain Christian sects that there are, there's like this weird thing where, you know, coming before God always has to be very reverent and we have to say things the right way and all that. But we see it all throughout the Bible where people came to God and spoke to him very, very frank. I mean, look, read the book of Job. He had a lot to say to God that was very contentious and candid and even accusatory towards God. Many of the Psalms that David wrote, and they are brutally honest. You know, he cries out to God, why have you forsaken me? He cries out to God, the waters are up to my neck. Basically, I'm drowning here and I need help and nobody's helping me. And so there's something about that honest communication with God that God responds to. I think it's because we come face to face with the reality that we are grappling with. And we even see this in Jesus, like Jesus, who was perfect, asking the Father that if there is any other way to take this away from me, please, let's find that other way. And obviously we know there wasn't, and he submitted himself to the Father, but he still had honesty. He still was asking the Father if there could be a plan B, let's do that. And so I guess the main message and thing that I want to share is that God understands us as humans. He understands our human emotions, our frailty, our feelings of being insecure and unsafe and unsure of ourselves or the world around us. And God has sympathy. He has empathy on us. He's not condemning us. He's not standing above us thinking like, oh, just get get it together already. It's the complete opposite of that. He wants to come into our situation and bear with us, suffer with us, and comfort us in the midst of our pain, our suffering, our mental distress. And this has brought so much uh, peace and intimacy between me and God as I have just allowed my heart to be fully transparent and honest before him. Thanks for listening to me just share a little bit about my faith and where I'm at in certain areas of my life when it comes to my faith. Uh, If you like this type of content, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. You can hit the little bell for notifications. Also, if this speaks to you or you can identify with what I'm saying, please feel free to leave some comments below. It's super encouraging to me and everyone else who gets to read those when we can realize that we're not alone, but there are other people that experience the same type of stuff in this life. Thanks again for spending a few moments with me today. Again, my name is Joey and you've been watching Joey Talks Life.